Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a donut 3D geometry just like this one using MATLAB or like this one as well. You will be able to choose which angle of the arc you want. But first, the actual name of the geometry is not a donut, it's a... Um, Taurus. And we're going to do exactly what the definition number 3 says, which is a donut shaped surface generated by a circle rotated about an axis in its plane that does not intersect the circle. So, we're going to create a circle. And we're going to rotate the circle about the z-axis in this case. And I don't know about this part that doesn't intersect with the circle. Well, let's go to MATLAB. Okay, so first things first, we're going to define the variables that are going to describe the torus. The first two variables are pretty simple, the outer and inner radius. So if we look at the donut from the top, you'll see something like this. And this is going to be the central axis. And the outer radius is going to go from the central axis to the outer perimeter of the donut. This is going to be the outer radius and the inner radius is going to go towards the inner, all right? Now, if you were to take a cross-section, for example, this cross-section right here, and you were to see it from the front, you're going to see a circle. The radius of this circle, that radius is going to be the difference between the this radius and the other radius. So R, and I apologize for this, writing with a mouse is really complicated, is going to be equal to R out, okay, outer radius minus inner radius, okay? So, the outer radius is going to be equal, in my example, I have it as 1.5. The inner radius has to be less than the outer radius, so 1. Then I'm going to define a variable, which is going to be alpha, which I'm going to explain later what it is. So for now, let's keep it at 360. And then the ones we always write, the number of nodes per cross-section, um, I'm going to have 21. And the number of cross-sections, that's going to be 50. First, I'm going to start uh, initializing the plot uh, with the plot origin function that, that I also made a video of, the link is in the description of this video. This is just for you to see, so it's easier to, to see where the origin is located and more or less the dimensions of the, of the shape. So here, if I run this, should have done this before starting the video, but you have to add all the, all the functions to the path file in order for MATLAB to open them. But yeah, here it is. So you can see uh, here you have x, y, and z axis. x is the red, y is the green, and z is the blue. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to plot one of these circles that is going to be the cross section of the donut. And the circle is going to be in the y, z plane. So it's going to contain a y and z values. And x is just going to indicate the position where it is. So x is going to be equal to zero for this first cross section because we're going to plot them right on the, on the green line. So x is equal to zero. X and y are going to be represented by the cosine and sine functions of the circle. So first we're going to create a vector that is going to contain the data for the angular uh, distance between the nodes of this cross section. So since it is a circle, it's going to go from zero to two pi. It's going to be divided in, in nodes. Then we're going to create another uh, vector that is going to contain the radial values of this cross section since is a circle, the radius is, for all the points, is exactly the same, so we just have to calculate what the radius is and then multiply times a vector of ones. So the radius, as, as I said before, is going to be the difference between r out and r in, and that multiplied by a half, so 0.5, and then that is going to be times a vector of ones, which is going to be of size one in, in nodes. Next, uh, right now we are in polar coordinates, so we can move on to Cartesian coordinates using the cosine and sine functions from the circle. So it's going to be z is going to be equal to r times the cosine of the angles. So I'm using uh, here a dot and then uh, the multiplication sign because we are multiplying a term by term inside the vector since r and th are vectors. If we just do a normal multiplication, it's going to, MATLAB is going to assume that we're doing a cross product or a dot product, and we don't want either of those. What we want is to take item one from the radial values and multiply times the cosine of the item one in the theta values. So one by one. So we should end up with a vector of exactly the same size as R or TH. So we do this and we can copy this and do the same thing for Y. 
just uh, switch cosine for sine and finally the x is just going to be the position of this cross section which is going to be along the y axis and that means that x is equal to zero so we can just uh, set a vector of zeros of one row and n nodes columns now plotting this we should get a circle right i'm going to plot it in 3d so x y z and i'm going to plot it with uh, black uh, circles. Let's see what happened. Oh, sorry about that. All right, so we have uh, the first cross section, which is a circle, but this is not the correct position of the circle. We don't want the cross sections to be located in the center at yeah, the origin. The origin should be the middle of the donut, and there's no cross section there. There's emptiness, there's a hole. So we need to shift this uh, cross section a distance uh, away from the, from the origin, and that distance is going to be the inner radius plus the radius of, of this circle. So we can go to here y, because remember that the green axis is the y axis. And we can add the inner radius and then add the outer uh, the radius of the, of the circle, which was this expression over here. And running this again, there you go. Now it's shifted where it's supposed to be. There is, so I'm going to create a new uh, angle vector that is going to be called phi, that is going to be uh, uniformly spaced uh, vector so we're using the lean space function that is going to go from zero to alpha again i'm going to explain what alpha is later and it's going to be ncs because we're now we're specifying the number by the number of cross sections we're going to initialize uh, vectors x uh, uppercase uppercase y and uppercase c these are arrays that are going to contain all the x y and c values for all the cross sections so we don't know what size they are going to be but we're going to store everything there we're going to create open a new for loop with indices that are going to go from one to the number of cross sections we're going to create here a little array that is going to be temporal cross section and here we're going to use the rotation matrix to rotate uh, the circular cross section that we've created by by each of the angles here so we're going to take this cross section rotate it by the first item in this vector in the vector phi and save it on the temporal uh, Cross section. This temporal cross section is then going to save those values in the respective values into x, y, and z, and then do again for the second item in the phi vector. It's going to be rotation matrix, which again uh, I have a video on this. If you want to learn more about that function and exactly how it's written, make sure to check the description of this video. There's a link for for that. So that takes a two inputs. The first one is specifying which axis, which is the c-axis. Remember the blue is the c-axis. And then the angle. Here the angle is going to be each item on the five vector. And this is going to be multiplied times the three vectors here. So we're going to create a larger vector, which is going to contain x, y, and z. Now they have to be in column form because the rotation matrix is a three by three. And we need a a three by one in order to be able to cross multiply this. The result is going to be a three by one as well. Now we're going to write, now we're going to store the temporal C uh, cross section into the respective X, Y, and C arrays that we initialize up here, which is going to be X and below X, we're going to have the temp CS. It's going to be the first row. You can just copy this, paste it and just change it. So instead of X, we have Y and here two. Then here three and here C. Now to make sure that we didn't make any mistake, we can plot uh, in this same plot. We can plot everything again. Here you can see that I'm plotting each cross section of these three arrays. Oh, sorry. Here I'm. I'm sorry. I just noticed that I, you need to change this here. Two. Let's see. Now opening this, you, you can see that we have a lot of cross sections. Uh, basically, we are going to have 50, around 50 cross sections, I believe. And each one is rotated by a certain angle. That angle is contained in the angle phi, and so that's what we're using the rotation matrix for. So yeah, you can pretty much see the skeleton of the torus. We're lucky that MATLAB has already a function that creates a surface out of this, and all you have to do is just type surface, and then type the arrays that contain the nodes for the surface. In this case, it's going to be x, y, and z. Yeah, and I believe that's that's it. Yeah. There you go, there's a... Taurus. Yeah, really cool. Now, let's talk about this angle alpha. What happens if here I want, uh, let's say, a, a 
270, I just want three quarters of the donut. Here you can see that it generates with no problem at all, except for the fact that we don't have these plates. It's not a closed geometry, so we need to do something about that. And what we're going to do is that we're going to create, uh, since this is our, our starting point, we know that the point in the middle of this first circle that we created is going to be uh, a, a, an x value of zero, right? It's going to have an y value of the inner radius plus the radius of the of the cross-sectional circle and it's going to have a c value of zero so if we create a point here that connects to all the points in the first cross-section and then we rotate that point by whatever alpha the angle alpha is and do the same thing here and add one point to the beginning and one point to the end then we can close this i'm going to create a new function you don't need to do this and i'm going to call it uh get plates because we're going to be creating something like uh plates it's going to output the same x, y, and c vectors, the modified uh, x, y, and c arrays, I should say. And as arguments, now I'm lazy, so I'm just going to copy here from my notes. It's going to take all these arguments. So it's going to take the all the x, y, and c. These ones here. These are the ones that are going to be updated. The number of nodes are out, are in, and alpha. Don't forget to add an end at the end of the function to close it. First thing, we're going to create the first plate, which is going to be at our starting point. So plate one, and we're going to create a column, a column vector. The first value, the first item is going to be the x position, which is at zero, as we said before. The second value is going to be a distance r in plus the radius of the cross-sectional circle. So it's going to be basically this right here. And the other value is going to be zero. Okay, now we can create the second plate by using the rotation matrix, uh, rotate it all ar around the c-axis by degrees alpha. And since this is a 3 by 1 and rotation matrix is a 3 by 3, that means that we can multiply this. So it's going to be times plate 1. Now, in order to concatenate these uh, vectors to our x, y, and c arrays, they have to have the same uh, number of columns. Right now, they have one column. And what we're going to do is that we're just going to repeat that column over and over and over again 21 times by the number of nodes that we have here and that's very easy to do we can do use the repmat function we're going to repeat plate one uh, one time the column the rows because we don't want to repeat that we want to repeat the columns and the columns are going to be repeated by n nodes then we do the same thing for plate two and now we update x y and z and that's going to be done like this so Start X, open brackets, and plate one, the first row, which represents the X values for that first point, then the old X, and then plate two, again the first row. Then we can copy this, paste three times, change here to the second row, change here to Y. All right, so you should end up with something like this. Again, make sure to add an end at the end of the, of the function. And now let's just call the function up here before plotting. And that's going to be x, y, z is equal to get plates. And I'm going to copy this and paste it here. All right, let's see. So yeah, now you can see that the holes are covered. So it's a closed geometry which is excellent. Now let's try with another another value here. Let's say 37. What happens with at 37 degrees? Yeah, it seems to work. Now, in order to export this, I also have a video uh, on how to export this in STL or PLY. I'm going to be using STL. The function that we wrote is called export STL. It takes uh, five inputs. The first one is the name. So I'm going to call this Taurus. .stl in brackets and you have to add the extension it's going to take the three arrays and then the format which is in s c i i all right exporting this tells you how many fates it's 2000 it's not that bad here you can see there's the geometry let's see for a, a 360 degrees yeah and here is for 360 degrees so yeah i hope that this video was helpful to you i hope that you learned something uh if you don't know how to use those functions that i mentioned like the rotation matrix, the plot origin, and the STL uh, exporting one. I have videos on them. Check in the description. Again, if you have any ideas, just leave them in the description. If you need any help, I'm going to try to answer them as best as I can. I'm in no way an authority on programming, so don't expect much from me. But 
Anyway.